Veterans often need assistance. They often need help when it comes to reintegration. Uh, some of them have a hard time, especially combat veterans, especially those who may have been injured in uh, the process of serving their country. Uh, the folks who may have, have be dealing with post-traumatic stress as a result of their service, uh, whether combat or non-combat related, a, a lot of service members and their families even have stress associated with their reintegration back to the civilian world and the civilian working world. We all know that. It's something we talk about all the time. But how those veterans and military families find solace and peace in battling whatever is is afflicting them physically, mentally, metaphysically, spiritually, whatever, it, it varies. And the efficacy of these coping mechanisms and these healing mechanisms varies drastically from person to person. Some people use exercise. Some people use cooking and a lot of veterans, a shockingly large amount of veterans find peace and transformative healing through the arts. They find a way to express themselves via visual art, painting, sculpture, pottery, mixed media, you name it, or mixed medium rather. Is it mixed medium or mixed media? I think I just showed really briefly there that I didn't know what I was talking about. I was doing a good job of sounding like very knowledgeable there for a second. Mixed media. Okay, mixed media. There we go. I think that's right. Send me a message if I'm wrong. Uh, or dramatic arts, spoken word, theater. We've had uh, a, a local uh, group here, nonprofit, Feast of Crispian. They do Shakespeare for veterans. And veterans have found, if you remember that, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. It's a really good one. These veterans find an opportunity to express themselves and their feelings through these other characters and have found like they've saved lives with this. It's incredible, the impact and the musical arts as well. Singer songwriter stuff, playing in a band, Guitars for Vets is a great organization that helps, uh, that, that is basically a vehicle for music therapy for veterans. I mean, the, the, the studies that validate the arts as a healing coping, coping and, and, uh, and a, as a pathway to peace and a mechanism for that, the, the studies are a mile long. They go out the door and around the corner and they keep going all the way from here to Nebraska. So why is it so uh, difficult for the non-veteran community to wrap their brain around the arts. Oh, and I should also mention creative writing is in there. Any creative outlet. For some reason, the, the general population, the 99% of people who are not in the military and this 84% of people who don't have a family member in the military, a lot of times we are viewed as robotic. We're viewed as, you know, worker bees we you know we are inflexible robotic uh which is just not true if you've ever met a veteran or engaged with a veteran we're creative just like everybody else veteran community is diverse and varied every demographic and age group and background and creed and orientation is represented and accordingly the talents are different there are, cre there are different ways, creative outlets for these veterans and, and ways for vets to and military families, military spouses to express themselves. And they do. They have that in their bones, in their DNA, just like everybody does. So so getting that the word out there that veterans are creative and not only uh, are they well suited to creative expression, but it can be a mechanism for healing. Uh, getting that word out is I'm 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 a, I'm an evangelist for that, not just because I have a background personally in the arts, but like it's so important. I've seen the power, of music therapy and music education for these people. But you didn't come here to listen to me talk about that. We have uh, acquired quite the panel of experts when it comes to this. The team from Arts for All Wisconsin who do a number of programs 
uh, advocating for the arts throughout the state, but also veteran specific programs. Uh, they're all here. We got Jill, we got Christy, we got Joe, we got Beth. We have four people. I think this is the most we've ever had on the show. We have a, we have an army. We have a squadron. Well, squadrons in air force. You, you know what I mean? We got a group of people here to talk about the efficacy of the arts and in particular, specifically visual arts and creative writing for veterans and military families. And we're going to get into all of that, which I'm very excited about right after this eight and a half second video. Excellent, folks. If you're watching via Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter, uh, welcome. No matter what you're watching through. And if you're watching this on an old school tube television, I don't know how it got on there, but welcome to you too. I'm glad you're here. Uh, please drop us a line, say howdy in the comments. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen from Arts for All Wisconsin, our good friends, Jill, Christy, Beth, and Joe. Howdy, everybody. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. So let's let's dive right in because I kind of pontificated on the front end. And let's start with Jill. What is Arts for All Wisconsin? What does it do? Why should we care? Why should we support it? How does it do it? Where did it come from? Give us the, the background information here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Arts for All Wisconsin started as uh, Very Special Arts Wisconsin and then VSA Wisconsin. Um, we've been a statewide nonprofit for 35 plus years, um, supporting people with disabilities around the state through programs in the arts. So that's what we do. We have a lot of different um, types of programming that we offer. Uh, one side of our organization does a lot with um, exhibiting and selling visual art and representing artists um, to support them in that way. And I oversee see all of our educational programming. So that includes um, several adult choirs around the state, programs in schools and community centers, um, arts classes for adults, work with seniors um, with Alzheimer's and memory loss, and our work with veterans, um, which started at our Madison Veterans Center um, that happens to be in the same building as us. So that's, I think, how we got connected is um, the readjustment counselors that were working at the Madison Vet Center um, had some clients who were who were interested in, in exploring, you know, healing through the arts, and they reached out and got connected with us because this is what we do. We see the power of the arts um, supporting people with all different sorts of challenges and all different sorts of life circumstances and backgrounds. Um, and so um, extending it to the veterans population certainly makes sense for us and it makes sense for the people that we serve. So you're just, you're you're in the same building as the Madison Vet Center, and one day you just walk by Joe there, who's with the Madison Vet Center, and you kind of looked at each other and you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, there's an opportunity for a synergy here." Or how did that come about, and how long did it take to get all of the stakeholders, obviously, who have to sign off and support it and develop these programs on board, uh, or was it just a quick like, "This makes sense. Let's let's do this." Sure. Um, the original collaboration started before my time with Arts for All, actually, and so I wasn't a part of that initial um, formation of the groups. Um, but I know that one of the previous readjustment counselors who worked there um, really had a passion for the arts and um, sort of believed in that power of you know healing and transformation that can happen through that. And so I believe it was kind of her uh, initiative to, to bring more arts mm. programming to the veterans that they serve. Um, Joe, I don't know if you have any more background from your perspective on, on how the um, the vet center, you know, was really supportive in this, in this process. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you on this for sure. Absolutely. So yeah, it wasn't me. I was here when it happened. Um, but <laughs> I don't know exactly the inside story and how it happened, but it was, it was one of our, um, uh, Jen Salu, who doesn't work here anymore, but she's the one that, um, somehow they connected. I know she connected with, uh, anytime fitness, which is just across the parking lot from us. Um, at one time, too, trying to see if there's a way we could work with veterans and, and fitness side, too. So I'm not exactly sure if she was the one who initiated or how it came about, but that happened. And uh, then she pulled me into it, uh, which has been a very good uh, experience for me um, on my own personal journey. And just from a counseling perspective, seeing what's done for veterans, uh, the art side. And particularly, I work more with Beth on the writing side. But uh, yes. Uh, do you have a background in the arts? Then? Say again. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 there was a little delay there. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Do you have a background in the arts then, or was this kind of a new endeavor for you? Completely new endeavor. Um, so I was kind of roped into it. Um, as I've told Beth many times that I was not looking forward to the, the writing group. Um, however, as uh, so I came up along where Beth was going to be the instructor for the writing group. I was going to be kind of the, the veteran plus the, the counselor just in case something went wrong to be able to, to help out in that way. And uh, Beth invited me to go ahead and write and participate. Um, and I did, and it uh, it was very helpful for me on my own personal journey. But I've witnessed how it's been impactful for my actual veterans that I work with on an individual case and how the writing has been very beneficial for them there. Um, as well as the art side, I've seen even, I haven't had as much input there, but I have actually seen pretty amazing testimonies of what have come out of just the uh, veterans that I know who have gone through the art uh, pro uh, program there for Art for All. So, so you you being a veteran who is, has personally seen creative writing in specific, but the arts you've seen you've personally experienced that as a as a way to to heal and and to express yourself. Um, now, Beth and Christy, I think maybe we'll go to Beth since she was mentioned next. Are you a veteran? And if not, were you kind of surprised at the connection here? Because I think I think it sounds like Joe was surprised at the connection from the veteran end. Beth, were you surprised from the arts end that this was a match made in heaven? No, you know, no, I'm not. But thank you. I'm not a veteran. And the genesis really came out of, I have a big background in news, television news. So I'd go to get your story, Adam, or Christie's or Jill's or Joe's, but it would be all chopped up just because of time, right? You watch the news and it's, and I thought, well, what happens if people really had to say that they were the genesis and the generator um, of their own story and they had their own platform? So through a, a bunch of other training and really the genesis was, um, was a, a, uh, a sister and a brother team, he worked with trauma, um, mm -hmm. with people coming out of war. And then she ha is running a very large event center out East. And they came to share their own experience. Like you said, Adam, like that, the documentation of the science supporting what we've known for a long time, you know, what the arts actually do. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, it was just you know, working with Joe, having the art center say, yes, let's do this. Let's make it happen. And then to trust the process and then to watch the vets write or they were creating and then to have the stories come back. So it really did require an awful lot of trust, though. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. was it like a sure thing? It was like, oh, you hear about it and the science is there, but how does it actually roll in and manifest? But yes, it absolutely backs all the science. You know, it, it, it's it's I couldn't help but think that so you may not know my undergrad education is in music. And uh, even during college for music, the music kids, especially the jazz kids, because we were all judgmental, everybody else, uh, we we were <laughs> very, very uh, what's the word? I'm trying to find a good word. We thought the art, th the arts therapy kids were weird. Okay, like we, th it was so misunderstood. It's such a misunderstood discipline that even kids in the music department were like, yeah, I don't really know what that is, you know, and or, or what that does or how, you know, and obviously now being older and understanding things more and seeing firsthand the healing power of the arts and how it can be used for a variety of people uh, through a variety of disciplines, uh, it's, it's, eye-opening and and i really wish that they did more to educate you know people as they're growing up that like art therapy dance therapy like all of those things are like legit practices so uh beth are, are do you find that uh overarchingly you run into barriers of resistance uh, or, or or speed bumps when it comes to implementing these programs you said there had to be a lot of trust um did you ever face kind of like a, I don't see how this is going to do anything uh, sort of reaction to what it is that you do? No, I mean, Adam, it's a great question. I have to say that with Arts for All, I did not run into that. And that's why it works. That's why Christy's like right. smiling. She's like, yeah, they get it. They know what happens. And Jill, mm. a big supporter and the people that were there even when I came on. So no, not for them. 
but yes, it is Adam. It is. It's mm -hmm. like um, because people want a product, they want it right. in their hands, right? Or they want to say, I want to take these steps to get to this thing. I want it mm -hmm. solved. I don't really want to go through a process. And all of this is a process and it takes time. There is an awakening that's coming, you know, because it can't be like, I remember in school, they would call it big journalism. You know, it can't be big mm -hmm. therapy, like the fast food solution right. of things, right. right? I mean, that's, I remember that statement being made. It's not big anything. Yeah. Really, and for the first time, I, I sense people saying, especially after the last two years, to say, I want the time. I need the gift of time and space to make sense out of everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take it now. I, I don't want anything fast. It's been all too fast already. Right. So, but I do see it changing because, you know, you know, you look at your own schooling and everybody on the screen is kind of like being pioneers. You know, is anybody going to follow this thing or am I out chopping right. away all by myself? So there is, but I do see it changing very open, um, amiable, cooperative and collaborative with Arts for All, though. It is that was not a contest in any way. That's excellent. You know, and, and the VA, especially, or really any veteran support mechanism, uh, as I'm sure Joe understands from deal, from working at a vet center here, from serving veterans through a vet center, uh, a lot of times it can be that kind of assembly line therapy sort of thing. Like you need something. Okay, here's pills and there's a therapist and check mark you've been taken care of when it's really for some people that might work. But for most people, it's probably a little more nuanced than that. And I'm, I'm so glad that we're getting away from the mix therapy, as you mentioned. Christy, could you tell us about, and I, I'm sorry, I, I saved you for last here, but in, in what, can you talk about what you do as a resident artist for, is, is that what it's called, a resident artist? A teaching artist. Teaching artist. Mm -hmm. at, for Arts for All and the impact that you've seen that make in the people who you serve. For sure. So I'm Christy Grace. I'm not a veteran, but um, I have veterans in the family and uh, I've been working with Arts for All for about three years. And so I came in starting with the vets. And mm -hmm. so what you mentioned before is like people perceive as robotic. Um, you know, like I had that as a civilian coming into it. I was like, I don't know what to expect, especially mm -hmm. as a creative, you know, who is a, <laughs> who's a little kooky, you know, like but the first day, um, Joe was there, and we we just introduced each other, and I observed. And then at the end, I had one vet come, and he's like, "Are you scared of us?" I'm like, "No, I'm not, because <laughs> of what I've experienced. Like, just people, just people, mm. yep. trying to live life." And so, um, just getting into that experience, a lot of what we went through was creating a relationship. So I think that's that's huge with veterans, like they're there's loneliness around them in so many ways and to find a group of people looking for the same thing you know all from all different backgrounds but coming together to make art you know it's not like i'm prying into their lives trying to find you know the deepest darkest it's like let's make art together that was the beginning yeah. um, and so we generally picked a medium and then we learned how to do it and then would make art together and the conversation and relationships that happened around that central thing just learning mm. um, is what is what was really huge that's that's so cool and uh raymond roberts hopped in here uh board member for the wisconsin vets chamber he said packed house today you said it yeah we got a we got a panel of experts i i love it uh christy when you're working with the veterans in in the in their in their creating of art do you notice that their healing is this gradual process or does it work up to a moment of kind of like realization that that like oh i get it or oh i have expressed this thing and now i've turned a turned a page to a new chapter obviously the healing is never complete and we must be vigilant and you know and and consistent and uh, about all of that but but is it a gradual thing or have you seen that kind of like awakening I feel it's both. So okay. it's very gradual when people come in at first. Um, most people like crumple up their art at the end and throw it away. And like they'll even say something about it. Like oh, the, yeah? the worth they feel, you know, in that artwork is, is very little. Um, but as we grow and as they learn, like I'll hear some people say these art terms that they learned and I can feel the pride in them. Mm. Just like, I know this, I am mastering it. 
and having that confidence is it's a huge thing. And so I think it's a mixture of like healing slowly as, as they come and feel supported and create something new. And then once in a while, it's like that aha moment when they, they voice that they've learned and conquered something. And I, I just, I feel that. And they, they take their work home or they give it to somebody or even allow it to be in different veterans shows. And so that growth, you know, I'm sure there's some wiggles along the way, but like, it's definitely upwards. So how common is it? Uh, I was, I was kind of surprised to hear that um, for, but, but I guess now that you mention it, it's not all that surprising for a veteran to come in and after their first attempt go like, oh, this is stupid and crumple it up and throw it away because they're <laughs> self-conscious about it or, or for whatever reason. It's, it's very, very common, um, you know, or, the, or they're very quiet the first time, but like, even um, I've had some very skilled artists in the class and, and if they're having a rough day, that confidence in their artwork mm -hmm. is very low. Um, even if like everybody says, that, says that's beautiful, but they're hearing it, they're hearing the, the positive words around them. But yeah, definitely starting out, um, there's a lot of, I don't know if I could do this. I'm not sure I can master that skill. Um, oh, don't look at my work, it's not great. But mm. then at the end of you know the three years of working with them so far, it, that level has changed a lot. Outstanding. And I suppose as a, you know, as somebody with this trained eye in art, you're able to see their progression through what they're creating, mm -hmm. uh, which I think must be very, very special. Uh, what, what does the future hold for this organization? Uh, I, I'll go back to Jill. Well, I mean, right now you're serving veterans. Uh, what is the future? Do you, do you want to scale and serve more veterans? Do you have ideas for uh, additional programs? Um, I suppose maybe let's talk about your programs now and then talk about what the future uh, entails. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the past two years have, have um, led to a lot of different transitions through our, you know, many programs, but also the veterans groups that we have, um, you know, some met virtually, some met uh, outdoors at parks and other locations. Um, you know, there've been staff that have come in and out, um, you know, transitioning through. Um, but at this point, we're sort of restructuring a little bit, um, keeping the partnership with the Vet Center and welcoming their clients to attend the group. Um, but we're also hoping to open it up to um, veterans who may be, you know, members of the public and not receiving Vet Center services, but who would yeah. also be interested in, you know, exploring some of these artistic opportunities. So um, coming up, uh, starting the week of May 9th, we have a six week session starting in both visual art and in writing. Um, the visual nice. art session will be run not by Christy Grace actually, by, by an, but by another teaching artist we have um, named Jessie Salgado, who is herself a veteran and also working on her master's in art therapy. So bringing a lot of really good experience and talent to the program. Um, and we've also had um, had a similar program and collaboration with the Wausau Vet Center. Um, they've seen some changes now too. And so I'm hoping to bring that back up uh, in the near future um, and hopefully expand to other locations as, as interest and um, you know capacity allows. Um, but if you there, would like to find out, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Adam. Uh, is there a fee for these programs for the veterans? No, it is absolutely free for veterans to attend. And uh, we provide all of the materials that would be necessary. They don't need to provide any, you know, um, brushes or tools or anything else. Uh, we have a really well-stocked art center here in Madison. So, yeah. So if you're a veteran and you can verify your your former service status, you can provide your DD-214, you, you can get a six-week art, take six weeks of art classes with a professional free of charge with all materials provided. That's correct. That's an incredible opportunity. That's an incredible opportunity. So, so you're operating out of Madison and you said you're hoping to expand these programs elsewhere. What do you, what do you have in mind for the future? Um, well, we've been talking with vet centers in Wausau and in Green Bay um, okay. to see if, you know, they have interested um, clients who would benefit from these services and if they have, you know, locations and ways of spreading the word and that sort of thing. Um, so as we, we create more connections and have more testimonials and, and awesome, you know, people who can attest to the experience that they're, you know, they're gaining from these programs, um, I think I think it will continue to grow because the need is certainly there. 
That's excellent. And I do have the their website scrolling across the bottom there if you want to learn more about them and what they do. And if anyone has any questions here while we're while we're chatting, we still have a little bit of time left. So I'd be happy to relay those. Just throw them in the chat there. Uh, doesn't matter uh, which platform you're watching through. Just drop us a line. Say howdy. Ask them what their favorite sports team is, who their favorite uh, who their favorite visual artist is. Uh, ask them if they're going to be attending the May 21st, 5th Annual Veterans Light Up the Arts event, which I hope everybody everybody here watching will be. Um, but yeah, I, I want to turn over to, to Joe now uh, to just ask about, let's see if I can jockey this around here. There we go. Uh, to ask about the the Vet Center and how how you've seen these uh, art therapy programs play out and what role you see that playing in the future, at least for your vet center. Uh, is it what, is it something that you want to keep at its current level? Is it something that you need to see, uh, you know, from firsthand experience, you need to see it expand tenfold. Uh, what do you see as an, a vision for an ideal future? What well, I, I would say, I would love to see it expand tenfold. I would love to see, um, I, I think, the, the intriguing thing with the therapy side of the house is, oh, real quick, I just want to hit on something that Christy said earlier, which mm -hmm. is kind of the most, this is the thing that as a veteran, where, and as the therapist side of me, where, why I get excited about, specifically the writing group and the, art, and the visual art group, um, is that the reason I think it's so successful is that you're able to come and be yourself and kind of express who you are, whether it's in writing or in the visual, but then you're doing it in a group. Of other veterans and what happens to so many of us veterans when we come home we, we're, we're trained to fight <laughs> the unit, to on our, you know on our brothers and sisters on our right hand side and then we come home and we all of a sudden we're left by ourselves and we are we're, we're kind of like stuck as we isolate and and this is just a great opportunity where you cannot be isolating but actually be able to kind of be yourself express yourself whatever form that might be and then get the support of those around you. And I think that's where a lot of the true healing comes from in my perspective. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that this art for all and this connection we have with them continues to grow and we continue to see um, people coming to use it, um, not only uh, for their own uh, progress in life and getting better and readjusting to life, but just for their own, their own enjoyment of doing it. So I, I could say, for instance, I had, I've had several testimonies I could give on how this has been so impactful. And like one of my clients, she, uh, I was gone for a month and she had an issue come up. She didn't have anyone else to reach out to. So she just started writing as Beth had taught her and all the different things Beth has, has given her the insight in writing. Mm -hmm. And she said with, with just the writing on herself, by herself, she was able to we saw her own anxiety over the issue she was facing. And it was this amazing thing how this just, it doesn't just impact us for the moment here. It's something that they can carry on in their life. And on the arts for all, the more of the visual side, a, a gentleman, I think it was actually last week he came in. I hadn't seen him for probably three or four years. And he just came in and he had some art he wanted to show me. And he said, Joe, working with you and then going to arts for all, gave me my passion back for something I was really gifted at. And he just sold several paintings to the University of Wisconsin Hospital for a lot of money. And this gentleman was not in good shape when he first came in here. So it's just an amazing thing to see as a, as a counselor to watch how in conjunction with therapy, this has just been amazing to watch what veterans have been able to use, um, use uh, their, whether it's the, again, the visual art or the writing, how that's been helping them in their own individual lives. And so it's just pretty powerful. So yes, I would love to see this continue, um, this relationship we have and, and more veterans coming to it for sure. That's good stuff. You should have uh, that veteran artist uh, submit their work uh, to potentially be exhibited uh, at our fifth annual Veterans Light Up the Arts event here at the Milwaukee Art Museum. Go to wiveterans.art. And it'll take you right to the event page. And uh, towards the bottom of the description, there's a link for artists to submit. We're accepting submissions now through April 24th at 11.59 p.m. 
all disciplines of art, visual art, spoken word, dramatic art, music, whatever. You submit it and it's being informally juried by three art curators who know a lot more about that than I do. Uh, and then we'll let our selectees know and, and invite everybody to come out. The whole exhibit is by veterans and military family members. So that might be a good fit for him. And a yeah. lot of the people who work uh, who work with, with Arts for All Wisconsin uh, as well. I, I want to be able to do a round robin here and just ask if there's any anything that that you wanted to make sure that we covered or any closing thoughts or anything. I suppose let's go to Beth next. Uh, is, is there anything that you want to convey about these programs and their impact or the future or anything that you have going on uh, that you want to share with people who might be watching? Well, thank you. But just to echo with Joe, and I'm glad he spoke up because that's the real benefit of having a therapist in there because he, she, they, you know, get to be able to kind of unpack that part of it. But, you know, personal testimonies were, you know, there was one vet who said, I just could not have the, um, didn't have the energy or even the words to send a card that was really difficult to his mother. And after taking some classes, his comment was with a writing that was inspired, I sent the cards. Um, thanks for planting the seeds along the way. It also gives a platform to, for people to share their voice. You know, one woman who was learning some other things at another vet outlet said, hey, I want to share that. Mm. I can share some things about resiliency. So more those kind of testimonies were the big thing. And then, yes, the writing group that, that will be running for six weeks um, will be starting in May. And then we'll see what happens because we'll see about some possible virtual ones. We also double check because I know that there are um, virtual um, writing and virtual art dropping classes in April and um, Arts for All and Jill can add about how to find those, um, but they're available too. No charge, come test the waters. Excellent. Yep. And learn more about those programs and classes, artsforallwisconsin.org. Christy, what do mm -hmm. you got for us? Any closing thoughts? For sure. Um, so I would say anybody at all interested in these programs, just, just come. There's a growth mentality that's so key to this. Like we don't expect you to be excellent or, you know, advanced in anything. Like when you're coming in, just come and try. And it's, it's for your own personal growth and um, enjoyment. Do you find that that's a challenge uh, more so with the veteran community or challenge just overarchingly to get them to even come or acknowledge that, especially if they're new to the arts, that this could be a means by with to express themselves or heal? Uh, I see it as a challenge across the board. It's civilian and veterans alike, uh, but I do see people all the time saying like, I can only draw a stick figure or not even, um, mm -hmm. but they don't give themselves a chance to grow in it. So like, I think like you were talking about before, like veterans have found this as something healing. So mm -hmm. they might even be better at, at giving it a try than, you know, some civilians. Sure. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, I know we were just at you here, but uh, any closing thoughts that you want to make sure that we get out there? Well, maybe just to jump on board what Chris just said there regarding and you're uh, and answering your question, I would be that veteran who would not want to, to go to the arts for all if I, as, a, as a veteran. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, I, it was more of a kind of I rope, roped into it. And I think that's where for me as on the therapy side with my own individual clients, I do get to kind of share my own journey and how it has been so beneficial, um, even to the point where I now use some of the things I've learned from Beth in my therapy practice, helping veterans um, mm -hmm. and having and using writing as a tool to help veterans in my own clinical work uh, because I've seen it so, so successful. So not a writer, uh, not a not an artist by any means. Um, I'm the stick figure kind of guy, uh, but I have, uh, to anybody who's listening that is kind of in that boat, that was me, um, but I have found it to be an amazing uh, avenue to just my own personal healing as i was uh, as i stated earlier and uh and what i've seen it do for so many other veterans so if that's you uh i would say uh don't worry about it um just come out and enjoy yourself and it's just a good time to be with other other veterans and just express yourself the way you need to so it's a fun and uh, relaxing and community centric and empowering thing to do if you're hesitant, if you're a stick figure sort of guy or gal, uh, just give it a shot. You know, you you might you might discover a you might discover a hidden passion. 
Uh, Jill, we'll, we'll close it up with you here. Uh, any closing thoughts or anything that we missed? I feel like this time went by way too quick. It did. It was a very yeah. quick session. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just echoing at what everyone else has said, even if you don't see yourself as an artist, um, we don't have any expectations of you coming in. It's just a time to explore a new outlet for expression for. Um, you're not going to get kicked out creating. if you're a stick figure person. <laughs> Not by any means, no. <laughs> Get out of here. Who do you think you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're interested in finding out more and connecting, um, you can head over to our website, artsforallwi.org. If you uh, look under programs, you'll see Veterans Arts Studios. Good stuff. Uh, looking forward to uh, following along enthusiastically as this organization, uh, both of these organizations, Arts for All Wisconsin, and of course our vet centers throughout the state are collaborating to, to help bring these, these really truly deep-rooted transformational healing opportunities for our veterans and military family members. Thank you all for joining me. I'll ask you to hang on the line here. I'll, I'll just chat with you after the show for just a second. Uh, there it is, folks. I mean, firsthand experience from arts people, from veterans, from veterans, arts people, and everybody in between. This is impactful stuff. It's not just, this isn't fluff. This isn't like, you know, well, I suppose that's nice, but let's go go back to the pills and, and the, you know, the, the therapy at the VA, like it's, this is really impactful, life-changing opportunities for people who need help. So not only should we uh, be supporting, advocating, evangelizing for programs such as this, any opportunities we have to provide support for nonprofit organizations that advance the proliferation of the arts and arts therapy and healing through the arts of all disciplines we need to do. And for Pete's sake, if you're a veteran out there and you don't think you're an artist or you have a creative bone in your body, uh, you're wrong. You have creativity within you and there's a way you could have fun doing this. You could express yourself with it. You could find a new outlet. It might not be Da Vinci. You know, you might not be the, the next I don't know, insert artist here who's famous, but you could find something that really helps to make you tick and helps you to find that within you that, that may have gotten lost or distorted over time by virtue of your honorable service to this country. So don't, don't write off the arts. Don't do it. Artsforallwisconsin.org. Appreciate y'all joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>